This is down the rabbit hole where we question the mysteries and nature of reality. I'm your host, Justin Perry. See, I love these type of stories. Honestly, I can listen to them for hours. What got me hooked is me experiencing my own glitch in the matrix. It happened when I was 12, 13, and I teleported out of classroom. This honestly happened, and I've been hooked ever since. If you're driving to work, if you're coming home from work on your lunch break, enjoy these stories. Also, there are no ads in the middle of this video. Enjoy. I saw my sister at a parade, but she was actually right next to me. This story isn't as crazy as many stories here, but it freaked me out at the time and is my only real glitch in the matrix experience. For context, this happened in 2010, 2011, when I was 18, and my sister was 13, 14. Our city's baseball team had won the World Series that year, and my family, mom, dad, sister, and myself, went downtown for the celebratory parade. We arrived downtown about 15 minutes before the parade began and found a decent spot to stand right up front. Me, being an avid people watcher, began scanning the sea of people standing on the other side of the street. That's when I noticed a girl my sister's age standing almost directly across from my sister, and I became fixated on her. She was turned talking to her family, but when she turned back to face the street, I couldn't believe my eyes. She looked identical to my little sister, who was standing right beside me. And I don't mean just your typical doppelganger. My sister is a skinny, white, blonde girl, so we've seen other girls who look like her over the years, and this was different. They were like mirror images of each other. She even had on the same glasses and T-shirt and same colored jeans on. The only difference was this girl's hair was pushed back, and my sister always had her hair hanging in her face at that age. I was a bit speechless for a minute and then got the attention of my parents and said, that girl over there looks exactly like Brenna. Fake name. They looked, and I could see that they were also a bit taken aback by just how much they looked alike, and they agreed with me and pointed her out to my sister. As soon as my sister noticed her, the other girl noticed her at the same time, and they just stared at each other for a minute. At this point, we are all silent, and just looking at this girl, looking at my sister. The other girl's parents notice us staring, then notice my sister, and even though they didn't acknowledge us, I could tell they were thinking the same things we were. I could tell they noticed the resemblance and were weirded out. I had my digital camera with me, and I discreetly zoomed in on her, and even took a picture, because I knew people would not believe us when we told them. The zoomed-in picture was even freakier. It looked like I had just taken a photo of my actual sister. The parade started not long after, so we turned our attention to that for a moment. When I looked back across the street a few minutes later, the girl and her family were gone. We never saw them again. The other weird part of the story, which is the reason why I share it, is that I made a Facebook photo album that evening with all the pictures I took from the parade including the picture of my sister's doppelganger, with a caption that said something like, You may think this is Brenna, but it's not. Isn't this freaky? I recall receiving many comments from people who were stunned at the resemblance. A few years later, I was telling a friend about it and went to the Facebook album to show them, and the photo was gone. 
All of the other photos from that day were still there, except for that one. I guess Facebook could have removed it for some reason, but it didn't make sense why just that photo would have been removed. My dog confirms the glitch. First of all, forgive me if something is not written well. English is not my first language. Well, there I was playing video games in my room, with my dog lying next to me, and my boyfriend working on the computer in his office, which is opposite, but at a considerable distance, since my house is quite big. I listened to him start having a conversation with a colleague over the headphones. Whenever he concentrates on talking, he starts walking around the house so I'm not surprised to hear him walking away towards the kitchen. My hallway is long and echoes, and I heard him talking as he crossed it. And once there, he starts moving. Things in the kitchen. I thought he would want to eat something, as did my dog, who immediately raised his head listening to the noises and ran towards the kitchen. What happened next is that I immediately heard his voice much closer. He has a high-pitched voice, and I even got a little scared. I raised my head and saw him leaving the next room, still focused on the conversation. I thought my ears had deceived me, and that was where he was the whole time, until I looked down the hallway and see my dog arrive, who stares at my boyfriend very puzzled and turns his head a couple of times towards the kitchen, and again to my boyfriend. Would he be so focused that he teleported away without realizing it? Did my dog come to see him in the kitchen? The poor guy seemed really confused. I don't know how to explain to him that sometimes the Matrix fails. I traveled a few minutes back in time. This happened about eight years ago. I had to take my sister to her appointment at 6 p.m. at a place about 15 minutes from our home. I was watching TV, and she came running down the stairs because she hadn't realized we were late. It was already 6 o'clock. I checked my phone and confirmed. Above the door there's a big clock, too, and it was, no doubt, 6 o'clock when we left home. I started driving pretty fast, but the traffic didn't let me take the right turn. I should have to be in time, so I took a detour that would delay us even further. Anyway, we got there, and she got off the car, but one last look at her phone just made her stop. She looked back at me inquisitively and said, We're on time. We were 15 minutes early. It was 5.45 p.m., what happened? We don't really know. It's funny how people just assume we had the time wrong the first time, but we didn't. It was undoubtedly six o'clock when we left home. Tripled checked, plus the car also had a watch, and it was six o'clock too when we left, and it was 5.45 when we got to my sister's appointment. It still gives me goosebumps. The Vortex Face Man Around 12 years ago, while riding in a Ford Ranger with my friends, we encountered a man on the street. It wasn't unusual in our neighborhood, known for its homeless population. As night fell, my attention was drawn to his sunglasses, giving me an uneasy feeling. Strangely, time slowed down as he neared us. His gaze locked with mine, and his head tilted while his jaw contorted transforming his face into a swirling vortex. The sunglasses merged with the vortex as we passed each other in slow motion. I bilocated? It's pretty simple, really. What it says in the title. Due to the nature of what bilocation is or is thought to be, I obviously couldn't experience it directly and am relying on testimony from a friend of mine. If I'm in two places at once, the me who is me could obviously only experience one version of that span of time. I was roughly 17 years old at the time, 
junior in high school. It was second semester, so springtime. I believe it was a Wednesday, but I suppose that doesn't matter much. What does matter is that our history teacher wanted the entire class to come in after school to watch a Les Miserables movie. I believe the 1998 version with Liam Neeson for extra credit. We were doing the unit on the French Revolution. As I remember, it was not mandatory, but highly, almost desperately, encouraged for some reason that I couldn't discern either then or now. Maybe she was dealing with some personal stuff and didn't want to be alone. She was quite young, but very curmudgeonly and not particularly well-liked or pleasant to her students. So it's a bit odd that she was so keen to spend an extra couple of hours with them. There would, of course, be a worksheet or quiz after the movie that would need to be turned in the next day to get the extra credit. I was in my school's IB program, which was basically just a college prep program, where you take a bunch of AP-level classes all at once. So most of my classmates were the driven and motivated sorts. The majority of them couldn't resist the offer of extra credit, as even the slightest advantage was an advantage nonetheless. I probably started out that way, but at this point my depression and PTSD started to manifest in full force, probably spurred on by the puberty chemicals, and while I continued to get good grades going forward, I only did so due to a talent for osmosis and a decent memory. The motivation had already begun to leak out of me like air escaping a punctured inflatable raft. So I very briefly entertained the idea of going to the movie showing, but ultimately concluded that I could coast my way to an A without it, and really didn't want to have any more time in that particular class. What I did decide to do was tell my parents I was staying after school for an activity and take the extra couple of hours all to myself. As a kid that age, especially one whose parents had been overprotective in childhood and who has always had to share space with a sibling, I relished the opportunity to actually be alone for a while. So I took a walk. I walked around the school, past and through the athletic fields, which were mostly empty that day, and down into a wooded area past the school grounds, which was essentially a public park, with a nice path for walking and jogging. I was really depressed, in the clinical sense, but I was also a dramatic teen, so I spent that time pining after somebody I had an unrequited crush on and wondering what combination of words I could put together into a bit of perfectly maudlin poetry such that they would finally fall in love with me. Eventually I looped back around and then got a ride home slightly before the Les Mis crowd was due to disperse. The very next day, a close friend of mine at the time asked me to help him with the worksheet for the movie. I reminded him that I hadn't seen it. I didn't go to the extra credit thing. He seemed really confused and claimed I was messing with him. I explained that I absolutely was not. I had never seen that version of Les Miserables to this day, and I certainly wasn't there to see it that afternoon. He then went on to tell me, with bemusement and confusion in his voice and face, that not only had I been there, but I had sat behind him, that we had an entire conversation on and off, whispering, I assume, and that I had shared a spare juice box with him, which he apparently drank right then and there. The thing about the IB program in my school was that it was quite small and relatively new at the time. There were maybe forty-ish of us, and we all took the same classes, we all knew each other, so it couldn't just be someone who looked a lot like me and acted and spoke like me that my friend had simply never had a shared class with before that day. He wouldn't mistake anybody else in the program for any other person in the program, and here the obligatory no drugs thing comes in. We were clean, nerdy kids, 
At that point, most of us hadn't even had a sip of beer, and my friend is much more mentally healthy than I am. No diagnoses to this day, as far as I know. Ultimately, we both sort of waved the incident away. It was, after all, impossible. And if it was impossible, it must not have been true. I know where I was and what I was doing. And he claimed with a straight face, I was sitting behind him and giving him juice, but he must have been mistaken, assuming that something weird did happen. Both of us must have just figured the other was goofing and left it at that. He must have been pulling my leg. To be honest, the latter is my primary hypothesis to this day. Occam's razor would indicate that this is the case. The somewhat weird thing that in no way rules out the rational explanation, but certainly muddies the water a bit, at least subjectively, is that we remained friends and fairly close for years and years thereafter, through college and well into adulthood, finally drifting apart only once he got married and started exclusively hanging out with other couples, doing whatever it is that groups of couples do. I remain single, not surprisingly, and he has never flinched or changed his story. Across the years, every once in a while, one of us would bring up that instance, presumably to get the other to confess to it, and each time we'd both hold fast to our respective stories with straight faces and then sort of just drop it again. If I were to investigate the occurrence now, I suppose I'd try to get other people to confirm or deny what he saw. But I'm 35 now. Everyone else is also 35-ish now, depending on birthday. So even if I were to track down one or more people from our program, their testimony would be unreliable either way. According to my friend, we mostly interacted with each other in his version of events, so I doubt anyone else would have been paying attention to whether I was or wasn't there that day, especially in a dark room with a movie playing. I'm not really sure why it didn't occur to us to check with the others at the time. I know some theorize that glitch in the Matrix stories have some sort of perception filter affecting them, discouraging people from sharing. But I don't really buy into that idea, considering how popular these kinds of stories are these days. Heck, they were kind of popular, though much less prominent even back then. I guess maybe we just didn't think it was worth investigating, since both of us still suspect that the other is pulling an elaborate, soon-to-be decades-long prank. And ultimately, the actual event was utterly inconsequential when it comes to our day-to-day -day lives. We teleported. I joined Reddit and this sub a while ago because I think about my glitch experience at least weekly. I finally have enough karma to post it. Please let me know what you think, because it will drive me crazy to my grave not understanding this. This was in 2016 or 2017. My friend and I were driving through a quiet small neighborhood in Traverse City. It was a rainy day. In the middle of the day, we were stone-cold sober. I feel like I need to say that to feel validated. We passed a street, and I mentioned something about our friend Ashley recently moving to a house on that street. For the sake of the story, I think it was Fern Street, or something like that. The next thing we know, we were stopped at a stop sign at a T in the road. An older model olive greenish convertible was turning left off the cross street, onto the street we were stopped at. The guy driving it had to jerk his wheel super hard to avoid hitting us as he made the turn. It was like he didn't see us until he was halfway into his turn. I looked over at my friend and she was already looking at me. I looked back outside and did not recognize a damn thing. It was now a sunny day, and our entire surroundings were completely unfamiliar. My friend was like, Han, I'm scared, where are we? 
and I kept asking her the same thing. I asked if she saw the car almost hit us, and she had, but neither of us knew where we were or what was happening. Suddenly, everything became familiar again. It was like our entire surroundings morphed into a recognizable intersection, and I was like, um, we are right near the Sail Inn. A bar we knew. The weather was rainy again, and we knew the exact intersection we were stopped at. I asked my friend what she remembered last before we got to the stop sign, and she said she remembered me talking about Fern Street. That was the last thing I remembered, too, so we drove back to that street, and it was three blocks down the road. My friend hates being reminded of this day because it still scares the shit out of her, and it haunts me because I am so fascinated by that experience, but I also just want to know what the F happened to my damn mind slash body slash existence in those moments. The only thing I wish is that we knew what time it was and how long it lasted. Felt like it was slow and fast at the same time. I don't know, man. Weird-ass shit that I'll probably die trying to understand. Teleporting blankets. This happened eight or nine years ago. Would love to reason it away, but I figure it's impossible. I still lose sleep over it sometimes. This will be long, true to the detail. Please do not comment that I was on something because I am 200% sure I was sober and of sound mind. Made plans to camp in a hammock in the woods with BF at the time. I picked him up late at night and he locked himself out of the house with no way to get back in until morning. I was superstitious and suddenly a black cat ran halfway across the street, stopped, then turned around and ran away. I caught a bad vibe and said we couldn't go to the woods. It was a protected wildlife area, and we weren't supposed to be there overnight. My friend group frequently did anyway. Earlier that day, we picked up a heavy-duty stack of about four plastic chairs and shoved them in the back of my car. We folded the seats down to fit them, squishing the hammock and blankets we planned to use later. He was not allowed to spend the night at my place as I still lived with my parents. Mom was a light sleeper. I literally made this dude pee in something to keep him from walking around at night. So I know we didn't leave. Crazy, I know. But it's a small house. I snuck him in through the window and we didn't even leave the room watched TV, and went to sleep. Morning comes, Mom leaves for work, but promptly returns. She drops my blankets and hammock in the hallway, yelling at me for leaving them down the road. I live across from a lake with a beach that I never go to. Okay, first thought is someone broke into my car, except it's still locked, and the chairs are still in there, and the seats are still down. I had no friends in the area who would prank me, use my stuff. There was no sign of it being tampered with. The keys were in my room. My stuff, which were clearly the same items, were not in the car. Someone would have had to get the car unlocked without triggering the alarm, which was parked near my window. Get the chairs out. Pull up the seats to get the items. Put them back down. Put the chairs back close and somehow lock the car. Silently, you could not see the items from the outside as they were squished under seats. Remember I mentioned that cat? I found out later the cops were monitoring the lot for the patch of woods. Friend caught a drug charge out there and they showed him a pic of my car, asking who I was in return for the lessening charge. Car was registered in my parents' name. Essentially, we would have gotten arrested for trespassing if we went there that night. I don't know why, but it feels relevant slash related. Okay, somehow we stopped at the lake and hung out there and just left the stuff. Except how would we both forget all of that? And the whole process of taking everything out just to get the items. I have never left my stuff like that. 
especially outside. I was sober and just trying to go to sleep without getting caught sneaking around. Plus, emphasis on the fact that I literally never go over to that area anyway. Also weird, everything was dry. This was near a lake, so you would think there would be dew on the fabrics, but there wasn't. They weren't dirty. They didn't smell different. Hammock was still tucked in its bag with the ropes. I will not even begin to speculate about ghosts or dimensions or whatever. I just have no idea how this happened, and it has always haunted me a little. Customer is a completely different person. This is freaking me out. So I work at a bank as a teller, and I made an error with a customer who was an elderly black woman. So I called her after she left and apologized and told her, I correct the error, and then I put that incident in as a record on my computer. A few weeks ago, an elderly white woman comes in and does a transaction, and her name is familiar, so when I look her account up, it's the same woman who I made the error with, same name, number, and address that I made the record for on my error. I hope there's a logical explanation for this because this is honestly freaking me out and causing me to have a panic attack. Edit. People are telling me this is identity fraud, but that wouldn't make sense, since when I called that number to tell her the error was corrected, I recognized the voice as the black women, and I remember the ID was her too. My car was somehow transported to the other side of an accident that was right in front of me. I was late for an appointment and was speeding up a hill with a curve at the top. Right as I came around the curve, I saw there was an accident with injuries directly in front of me, taking up both lanes. Both lanes coming from the other direction had drivers that had slowed down so they could rubberneck and people had already started to gather on the sidewalk to my right, so I couldn't get around the accident on either side. I quickly assessed that there was no way I could avoid hitting them, and knew that if I stayed tense, I would sustain worse injuries. So I shut my eyes and relaxed as much as I could as quickly as I could, and waited for the impact, and waited. But the car kept moving, I opened my eyes to see two clear lanes ahead of me, and when I looked in the rearview mirror, I could see the accident behind me. To this day, I wonder what the people on the sidewalk saw. Edited, I'm having an unexpectedly strong reaction to other people's identical stories. This happened when I was in my twenties. I'm now in my late-ish sixties, and I've told people this story before. I shared it in a pre-social media group, I'm sure I shared it on Reddit before. I've shared it in a Facebook group before. And this is the first time I can remember anyone responding with the same experience, let alone so many people. I said this in a comment last night, but want to repeat it here. I think the reason I'm sitting here tearing up is because some part of me has never been 100% sure this actually happened. I mean, come on. Growing up in white American culture, especially being born in 1957, how do you make sense of something like this? How could this be real? So finding out that even a relatively small number of other people have ex the exact same thing, finally confirmation that it did indeed actually happen. I mean, the chances of me completely imagining every detail of something so specific that I had never heard of or dreamed about before. Something supposedly so impossible. Then finding out it happened to a bunch of other people. The store left. We went to our local soil and dirt and landscaping suppliers for years. One day, we went to pick up a trailer of soil for garden reasons. And it was no longer there, just gone. The chain link fence was still there. You could see there used to be a business on the land, the dry, dead spot where the small building was where you paid. 
everything. It was all just gone. Weird. We came home and decided to get it from elsewhere. Cut to a few weeks later, we are driving to somewhere that took us past this area, and the fucking place was exactly how it was before. Customers driving in and out, walking around, looking at stuff. The small building where you paid was there. It was weird as hell. We looked at each other and were both confused, and my stomach kinda dropped. It was the most strange feeling. We ended up needing something from there the following weekend, so we hooked up the trailer and headed there. It was still there this time, too. We got to talking to a young lad that worked there and asked what the deal was with it being gone a few weeks prior. He looked at us like we had spoken to him in Swahili, had no idea what we were on about. He had worked there for over a year. We were perplexed, to say the least. It was not something you would miss, and there wasn't another area we had confused it with. It was on the corner of a busy road that went past the main shopping precinct and an industrial-type businesses area, nurseries and tile shops and the like. Husband doesn't like to talk about it. I think about it at least once a month. The weirdest shit I've ever been witness to. They ended up closing and moving to a bigger place further away, and the land it was on has been turned into a block of flats, I believe. In between them building the new flats and the closing and moving of the garden supplies shop. The place was surrounded by the chain link fence for months, exactly how it looked the day we went there when there wasn't anything there. Sunscar took a trip. Okay, I don't exactly believe or disbelieve in the whole glitch in the Matrix thing, but damn. I just had a big one and can't explain it. My wife and I took the dogs for a walk. We returned to see our son's car was no longer in the driveway. We discussed hoping he left the front door unlocked as we went up the driveway. The door was unlocked and we went in and went about our day, but wondered where our son had gone off to. My wife then noticed he forgot his wallet on the table and said she hopes he doesn't need it. I looked out the window to see he was back and waited for him to walk in, and waited, and waited. He didn't come in and wasn't outside when I looked for him. I checked his bedroom, and he is sound asleep. No way he came in. Would have to walk right in in front if us and our two little yappers. WTF? Did someone take it and bring it back? No engine is cold. We're totally stumped. Disappearing and reappearing items. When I was a sophomore in college, something downright strange happened involving an item disappearing and then reappearing. Like many schools, this one allowed their students to load their school IDs with dining hall cash. You could swipe with it to pay for a meal or an item at the bookstore on campus. The ID also let you into certain buildings. We used them all the time. One day I couldn't find my ID. It wasn't in my wallet, where I always put it. No big deal. I empty my wallet, my backpack. I look in my clothes, my jacket, my clothes from yesterday, my books. I cannot find it. The cards are not free to replace. And I was a poor college kid, so I really didn't want to go down to the student center and buy a new one. I looked for two weeks. I emptied out my wallet many times. I commuted from home and had no car, so it's not like it could have been another student borrowing it while I wasn't around. Eventually, I ride the bus the student center to order a new card. They print the new one, hand it to me, and I promptly put it in the same wallet, in the same spot, as I would have put the original. I then go right to the dining hall and pull out my new card to pay. The student worker scans the card and says, I'm sorry, there is no active account. 
I'm confused because I had just tested and activated the card. Then he hands it back to me. It was the old card. I sometimes think about this to this day. This was ten years ago. Did I slip to another world? I was at school when a girl I barely knew approached me and started talking in an overly familiar manner. I didn't question it, as I realized that she was hitting on me, but eventually she said that she missed hanging out with me and Ryan. Ryan was a friend of mine, but not the kind of friend who I hung out with, and I certainly had never hung out with this girl. She was a year below me, so didn't know me from any lessons or whatever. So as not to sound rude, I went along with it as she recounted all of the dinner breaks we'd spent as a trio. Again, this simply didn't happen. Long story short, we ended up in a short relationship, but were not compatible and parted ways. During this relationship, I did decide to ask her if pretending to know me was her way of flirting. She got quite offended at this. I seen myself drive by. I went on a brisk walk yesterday to get some fresh air. It was in the evening and not many cars were out and about. I was getting ready to cross an intersection when a single car, a white Toyota Corolla, was stopped at the light. I didn't cross, cause I looked in the car and seen myself in the driver's seat. I was shocked and it sent shivers down my spine. They had the same clothes I was wearing, same jacket, same everything. I was frozen in place and gasped. All of a sudden the person in the car me looks over directly at me and smiles and remains frozen in that state. They never blinked or moved, just a dead stare right into my face. The smile seemed to widen more and more with each second that went by. I couldn't move. The most terrifying fear came over me. I closed my eyes and I could still feel them staring me down. I could hear my heart rapidly beating. I was short on breath. A good thirty seconds passed at this point. When I opened them, I seen the light had changed and the car was already up the road having gone through the green light. I could hear the engine getting more faint as it drove on by. Silence filled the air once more as I was left with only the memory of what just happened. I took a deep breath. Shaken by my event, I quickly ended my walk and went back home. Wow, this is why I stay in so much, just when I think I've seen it all. I swear they weren't there before. This has been bothering me since it happened last week, and I can't come up with an explanation for it. The night before this happened, I had noticed that I didn't have anything to drink and asked my husband if he would get me a Gatorade in the morning because he usually goes to the store before he leaves for work. When I woke up the next day, he had already left. I went to go look, but figured he had forgotten since it was pretty late when I told him, and he forgets things a lot. I looked through the whole fridge, including the drawers, and sure enough, I couldn't find any new drinks in there. I poured myself a bit of leftover Sprite, because it was the only thing in there, but I really don't like drinking soda much, especially in the morning. I came back and got something else out of the fridge about an hour later as well, and there were still no drinks in there. At this point, I assumed I was going to have to walk to the store to get a drink. He had our only vehicle, but figured I would ask him just in case he did get some and just forgot to put them in the fridge. He told me he got me two Gatorades and that they were in the fridge. I went to look yet another time, and there they were, front and center. In fact, they were right next to the bottle of Sprite. I don't know how I could have possibly missed them while grabbing the bottle right next to them. Even if I was half asleep, and that unaware of what I was looking at, I had come back to the fridge a second time already, and was definitely awake at that point. 
It's like the drinks didn't exist until he mentioned them, and suddenly, there they are. One minute they're open, the next minute it's deserted. This happened a few weeks ago in L.A. I was walking with a friend to my car to drop something off. On the way, we passed a busy upscale cafe with multiple people sitting outdoors at tables with food and such. There was a small line inside waiting to order. It was so busy I made a mental note to check it out sometime. This coffee shop was only half a block from my car and on the same street. I put our things in the car, and we immediately walked back towards the cafe. But the cafe was empty and closed. The outdoor tables and chairs were no longer there. Inside was dark and empty. I saw one person inside wiping the counter, but that was it. It was so shocking, I stopped walking and stared at the cafe. Less than 60 seconds ago, it was open and full of people. My friend noticed me freeze up and asked what was up. I explained it to them. They just shrugged and said they didn't really notice the cafe at all as we walked by. It still makes me shudder a bit. Feels like I seamlessly shifted into a new reality. My wife and I saw our five-year-old daughter, but older. This happened a few months ago. In early January, my wife and I were in the kitchen, prepping lunch and chatting. Our five-year-old daughter was in the living room, watching TV. No one else in the house. We live in a two-bedroom apartment, and the layout of the house allows us to see a bit of the corridor and hallway outside the kitchen door. My wife was cutting up food, and I was sitting behind her. As we talked, she started to turn around to face me, but stopped midway, staring at the kitchen door. She froze up completely, and I remember asking, What is it? She let out a loud gasp, and then I instinctively looked toward the door as well. I saw a brief glimpse of what seemed like a person turning the corner towards the living room. It happened very fast, but I was sure I saw someone. I panicked. My immediate thought was, holy fuck, someone broke in. My daughter's alone in the living room. The only thing I thought of doing was grabbing a knife and yelled at my wife to call the police. I rushed into the corridor and into the living room. In the living room, there was nothing. My kid was just sitting on the couch watching Bluey. She looked at me and asked, What's up? With a confused expression. Mind you, I had a knife in my hand and probably looked crazy. I tried to play it off and asked if she saw anyone come in the room. She hadn't and was clueless about what I was talking about. I searched the living room and the rest of the house. No sign of a break-in. Windows closed and we live on the third floor. If someone had tried to escape that way, they would have fallen really bad. I checked everywhere. Wardrobes behind curtains, the front door. Nothing. No signs of entry, and the front door was totally closed, and we didn't hear anyone come in or anything of the sort. This all happened within maybe ten minutes. I went back to the kitchen, where my wife was crying. She had frozen up and didn't call the cops. I calmed her down. She got scared bad, and she couldn't even speak properly. When she calmed down, she explained to me what she saw. I personally only caught a very quick glimpse of the thing turning around the corner. However, my wife says she got a good look at it. She says she saw what looked like a tall woman, dressed in a floral dress and high heels, walking across the corridor. Neither of us heard any sound, though. She said the woman stopped when she understood she was seen, looked at my wife in the eyes, and my wife swears the figure looked like our daughter, but older. This happened in the space of seconds, when she first froze up in shock. When my wife gasped, 
The woman hurried and turned the corner into the living room. I only saw this last part. If I hadn't caught a glimpse of it, I would ask my wife to go into therapy or something. But I know something was there. We never figured out what we saw, but it was definitely the strangest moment of my life. And I know it happened. Wanted to share here. I got a phone call from my girlfriend from an alternate reality. Yesterday at 5 p.m., I was playing the new OG map game mode on Fortnite while sitting in a Discord call with my friends. Suddenly, I received a missed phone call from a number with no caller ID. Usually, I don't answer calls from unfamiliar numbers, but I was expecting a call from a job I had applied for. Thinking it might be them, I decided to answer. Upon answering the second call from the same no-caller ID number, I asked, Hello. The loud gunshots and sound effects from Fortnite made it hard to hear at first, so I removed my headset to listen better. The female voice on the other end sounded like my girlfriend, and her tone seemed offended when I asked who it was. To confirm if it was her, I inquired about the caller ID and the response matched how my girlfriend would react if she was genuinely confused. She asked to come over, suggesting a Lyft instead of Uber, because of a $5 discount I had for the Lyft ride, and also we share the same Lyft and Uber accounts. Despite being surprised by the accurate details, something felt off, especially since she didn't know the driver was even close by. Slightly suspicious, I bought the lift, but then hesitated when she asked for the money instead so she can buy it herself. This led me to consider a potential scam, and so I cancelled the ride, especially since she had mentioned not wanting to come home with me earlier that day. Upon calling my actual girlfriend, she denied making any calls, leaving me puzzled. The bizarre encounter left me contemplating the idea of alternate realities intersecting due to her very accurate responses, as no other explanation seemed plausible. Perhaps in a different universe or just a scam trying to get money from me. It was too coincidental, though, and someone would have to be stalking me to know those things. I do think it's possible, though, that higher versions of ourselves exist with everything we desire, waiting to be manifested through the energy we create around us. Share your thoughts or similar experiences if you've encountered something similar. A strange person walked into the house and said hello. It was my dad, or something imitating him. Years ago, when I was around 18 and lived with my parents, I was sitting in the living room chatting with my mom and sister. My dad had gone out to play pool a few hours earlier. We heard the back door open, which was not visible from the living room, and continued to chat, as we assumed it was my dad coming home. As soon as we heard the footfalls of the person inside the house walking toward the living room, we all paused and stared at each other, confused. My dad was a tall, heavy man and had very distinctive footfalls, and these were different. They did not have the same weight or pattern. My immediate thought was, did dad invite someone over, even though that's not something he ever did. As the footsteps got closer, we heard a man's voice call, I'm home, and I looked to my mom and sister who both seemed as concerned as I was. The voice sounded nothing like my dad's or like anyone's voice we recognized. I don't think he could sound like that if he tried. I can't describe it, other than that it was a completely different voice. Someone else's voice. My mom stood up, shaken, just as my dad rounded the corner into the living room. We just stared at him in shock. Dad, was someone else in the house? I asked, and he gave me a puzzled look and asked what I meant. 
My mom then asked, whose voice was that in the house? We asked if he's speaking in some kind of different voice, and he, baffled, said no. There was no one else in the house, and he was speaking in his normal voice. It has unsettled my mom, sister, and I ever since. It's hard to convey over text, but it was an entirely different person's voice. If it was only me who was there, I would have doubted myself. But we all had the exact same experience. It was like the universe got confused and assigned the wrong person, but corrected it at the last second. We still talk about the time that Dad came home, but it wasn't Dad. A car appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared into thin air. Back in college, I was one of the few freshmen with a car, so friends often asked me to drive. This was especially true when it came to end of year and people needed to fly back home. They'd ask me if I could drive them to the airport. I'd say yes, and they'd usually pay for gas or buy me dinner as thanks. So I'm driving one of these friends to the airport via freeway when we get to telling some stories. This friend, we'll call him Josh, was a regular comedian, one of those Jim Carrey types who put his whole body into the gig. This will come into play shortly. We're driving along exchanging stories when it's Josh's turn. He gets into the act, gesturing wildly, when I realize I need to get over into the slow lane so I can take the exit to the airport. I check the rearview mirror and passenger mirror to make sure no one's coming and the coast is clear. There's no cars around us for a good quarter mile in either direction. But I guess I was checking the mirrors too, obviously, because Josh decides to stick his head out the window as a joke. I'm talking everything neck up. Josh looks back down the freeway behind us, sees nothing, and angles his head to look at me, while still out the window, and says, you're good to go. So I start merging, over and... A car slams on the horn as I almost hit them while merging into the slow lane. I veer back into my original lane, a little shaken from how I almost hit a car that I didn't see and turn my body to look behind me, where the car I almost hit flashes, its lights at me a few times from the slow lane in what I assume to be anger. I looked back at Josh, who's now rubbing his head from where he hit himself on the top of the door, having banged the side of his head when I swerved. Where did that car come from? I asked, all confused. I hadn't seen anything in my mirrors and Josh had literally stuck his head out the window and saw nothing, so there were no blind spots this car could have come from. I have no idea, Josh said, and I could tell from the confusion on his face that for once, he wasn't kidding. We looked at each other, uncertain what had just happened, and again made to change lanes, this time much more cautiously. I very pointedly looked behind me and explicitly asked Josh to stick his head out the window, again, to check whatever blind spot I had missed, so we didn't almost hit that car again. Except there was no car behind us anymore, nor any cars at all for that matter. There were no cars for a quarter mile in either direction, and we hadn't passed any exits, merges, or other off-ramps. Carefully, I creeped us over the line to the slow lane, and this time we made it without incident. Josh stared blankly behind us out the rear window, again seeing nothing, stared at me, and then turned back to stare ahead as we drove the last mile to the airport off-ramp. It really was as if a car had teleported in, blocked our way, and then teleported out. I've never seen anything like it before or since. The White House. What White House? This was about two years ago. My partner and I had a friend living with us at the time. We had a co-worker with a three-year-old son who needed to get out of an abusive situation. 
We had always told her that if she needed somewhere to go, she would be safe with us. One night, around 9.30, we got a message from her, asking if we can go pick her and her son up. Me, my partner, and our friend all got in the car to go get them. She sent the address, and we started driving that way. It was about an hour drive for us. It was very back roads and out in the country. When we got to the location the GPS took us to, something felt very off. All three of us mentioned something not feeling right. There was an open gate, and you could see the light from the road, so we started to drive in. When we got onto the property, we could see the house from behind the trees. It was completely empty and way too clean to be lived in. There was a single light on in the kitchen, and you could see straight into the entire house. There was not a single piece of furniture, no decorations, anything. There was a small table under the light in the kitchen, but no chairs. Everything was white. The walls, the table, the house itself. We felt super uneasy, called the friend to let them know that we were there, but it seemed empty. She asked if we got the right address and sent it again. It was the same exact address she had sent the first time. We know we didn't type it wrong in the GPS because we just opened the link through texts. So we click on the same address she sent us the second time and it started routing us for somewhere 20 more minutes down the back road we were on. We went and picked her up and asked her about the house jokingly asking her if it also made her uneasy. We assumed we were just being paranoid from it being late and dark out, but then the co-worker informed us that there are no houses where we said there was. We knew there was, as all three of us saw it. We had pulled into the driveway of said house and right up next to it, less than half an hour beforehand, so we decided that we were going to take her to there on our way out. We wanted to show her which house we were talking about. When we got to where it was before, there was nothing but the woods and trees. No gate, no lights, no gravel driveway, nothing. We knew we were in the right place, but no house to be found. The uneasy feeling of something being off followed all three of us for a few days. We all felt like we were being watched. We still have no clue what happened. Every time I tell the story, I get goosebumps.